Hell O and welcome to episode number Say it with me three hundred of the TW two eight two eight Andron. <laughs> this is what we announced on um at Clash of the Castle, the quote unquote celebrating the history of SmackDown three hour special. But I think I've decided that going forward SmackDown will just be three hours now because it helps me get more people on the show. That was just my K Fab explanation for um making this specific week three hours. Um I think only two people that aren't normally on SmackDown show up on the show from Raw. One's Alexa and <laughs> you can probably guess who the other one is. Uh Yeah. But, how can we forget the major talking points from Clash at the Castle? Including the new WWE Champion. We will hear from him and Solo Sokoa tonight to explain what the hell that was at the end of the show in Cardiff. Without any more further ado, let's jump straight into episode 300 of the TW2828 Andron. The show kicks off with Bailey coming to the ring with Dakota Kai. And she says, Damn, I'm good. You know, <laughs> Cardiff loves me, you know, the United Kingdom, they love me, in case you didn't hear all those stupid chants, you know, about me being their girl, you know, newsflash ding-dong dummies, I ain't nobody's girl, especially not yours, but, you see, the ba- the main takeaways from Cardiff wasn't about Kyrie, it wasn't about Utami, it's about us, me and Dakota, Delivering up on our promise and wrecking more damage on the SmackDown Women's Division. You know? Because I'm so good, I'm the greatest SmackDown Women's Champion of all time. Dakota, she's a close number two. And together, we're unstoppable. And we proved that against, you know, the woman who's the the most highly sought-after free agent when she debuted back at the Royal Rumble. SmackDown put their neck on the line to get you, Tami. You know, Kyrie saying the SmackDown Women's Champion, who I pinned, mind you. Both of them couldn't compare to us. Because we're just so much better than them. And of course, we couldn't do it alone. Well, we probably could, but you don't have to when you've got such great inspirational friends such as I have. So of course, me and Dakota could have damaged this entire division by ourselves, but where's the fun in that? This is a three-woman job. This is a trios game, you know? Or the greatest trios in WWE history. You got The Shield, you got New Day. Well, you can add another name onto that list. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud. I've never been proud of anything in my life to introduce you to my best friend in the whole world. The real Cora Jade. Out comes Cora. She's you know e- evil Cora Jade. She got the the bat and shit, the weird makeup, the black clothes. She goes, oh, come here, you. And her and Bailey have another big hug. And Dakota, like, cheers the morning in the background. Like, yes, yes. And she's like, I know what you're all going to say. Why, Cora? What happened? What made you change your mind? Why did you give in to Bailey's unrelenting, you know, pressure? Let me tell you this. You know the catchphrase? You know the saying they make? Pressure makes diamonds? They don't just say that for nothing, Okay. That's fact of life. You people wouldn't know anything about diamonds because you're all barely dirt. But what Bailey was doing, she wasn't being mean. She wasn't taking advantage of me. She was helping me see the light because Bailey used to be young and dumb like me and all of you. You know? Until she became the greatest SmackDown Women's Champion of all time. She wasn't that by being silly and hugging the fans. You know, that barely got her anywhere. So, 
as much as I tried to fight it, because that was the Bailey I grew up watching too. That was my inspiration when I was a child. I was a little hugger just like you all were. But this is the reality. This isn't ch this isn't we are not children anymore. It's time to grow up. And it's time to realise that alone we may be great, but together we're unstoppable. And we've got a lot of damage to cause as a trio. And we get Dakota Dakota talking. And she goes, and when us three are together, we are in control. And out comes Yutami. And she starts shouting at them three. And she's like, whoa, back up, girl. Like, I know you're not happy right now. Like, where's your friend? You know, Kyrie's not here tonight. I wonder why that is. Haha. <laughs> anyway, look, just because you're mad at us that you and Kyrie couldn't get the job done in Cardiff doesn't mean you've got to come out here and you know, take it out and I said, in case you can't in case you haven't noticed, we we kinda of outnumber you right now. But it's fine. And then out come Anne Marie and Kelsey. And they're like, Cora, well like what's gotten into you? You know, us three. You know, there's a group of us, like we we are the next generation of these women's the women's division here in Daily Boe. And me and Kelsey, we look we're trying to go about it the right way, and I thought you were too, but now you've sucked up to Bailey so much that you sort of lost sight of what's what's right and who you are. Because have I lost sight or have you lost sight? Are you still those bright-eyed little, you know, preppy youth that's trying to, you know, get their way to the top the right way? You don't get to the top the right way, you got to get to the top, you got to step on some doors. And if any of you two want to get in the ring right now, I'll teach you that the hard way. Then Anne-Marie gets into the ring and her and Cora are going to have a match. And he gets a 68. That's a lot better than I thought. <laughs> but Cora does, of course, win. She cheats to win, I imagine. Um, Cora pins Amarie 7 minutes and 20 seconds with a double underhook DDT. 61 for Cora, 59 for Amarie. And yeah, a nice match to kick off the 300th episode of Smack... Not of SmackDown, but of the series. After the match, though, the three of them stand tall and Kelsey checks on Amarie as a Shutami. When Kelsey gets jumped by all three of them, they continue to assault her as well, toss her into the ring post, toss her to the outside, and they do the same thing to Utami, attack her as well, just three on one assault, leave her laying. I imagine Bailey holds her up, Dakota does the kick, then Rose plant, and then Cora goes up top to hit the um, the senton. If she even still does that as a heel, I think she might have a new move. I can't remember. I can't remember the last time Cora Jade pinned anybody in real life, so... <laughs> but yeah, these three, with their fancy new background graphic, are standing tall here. <laughs> we then get Kayla is backstage. Because ladies and gentlemen, my guests at this time, one half of the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, just a Johnny Gargano alongside him, Candice LeRae. She goes, Johnny, you know, first things first, congratulations on your big defense over the Grizzled Young Veterans at Clash at the Castle. But unfortunately, you know, I can see you here by yourself tonight. You know, what's the update there? And Johnny goes, Champa, you know, he's a fighter. For as long as I've known Tommaso, he's he's fought back. And you know, people didn't think he would make it to SmackDown or Raw because he had a lot of neck problems back in the day. And he's, been, he's fought off Seth Rollins' attacks. And now he... He's tore a, a, a muscle in his stomach, but he's going to keep chugging along. You know, he's going to be back within the next couple of weeks, and me and him are going to keep fighting on as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You know, we, we haven't got to vacate. You know, this fight continues. And he goes, Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Mr. Gargano. Because it will give us such a great pleasure in make, taking the SmackDown Tag Team Championships from you too. Instead of having to take them from somebody else. And Johnny goes, good evening, David. He goes, ah ha ha ha. David. Mato. And then Johnny goes, David. 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 And then Canada jumps in and goes, Violet. And she goes, Violet. David. David. Violet. David. Violet. David, and then Swerve comes in, he's like, ah, oh, you know, you guys are sort of like, without even realising it, you're making like, 
be kind of going hard right now. You know, that's a that's a beat that we can get down to. Anyway, I hear you talking about the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, huh? You know, Grizzled Young Veterans may have come up on top of my boys to get that shot of Clash of the Castle, but now they're out of the way, and now if you next in line to me is Hit Row, because, you know, we like to make that money, 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 and nothing gets us that money more than being champions. And then David Martin Sly goes, Silence! You do not get to jump a queue. If you want shot at the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, you go through La French Connection to get there. And Top Dollar starts to go, well, we'll take your boys on. We'll take your boys on tonight. What do you say about that? And he goes, oh, your funeral. Au revoir. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'll be Edris Inofe et Malik Blade against Top Dollar and Ashanti of Hit Row later on tonight, I guess, with a future SmackDown Tag Team title opportunity on the line. I've just realised now that match might get penalised for having all unimportant people in it. Depends on how over these two are. But I think these two will definitely have momentum anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Speaking of momentum, something Otis does not have right now. We get a shot of him, like, in a bar, like, in some, you know, some, like, you know, backyard bar, like, country sort of bar. I know Otis isn't really country, but, you know, he fits that aesthetic. He's, where else can you go to the bar in, you know, a vest, a, a vest jacket and jeans with no shirt on and look perfectly normal? Anyway, the main reason he's there is because Fallon Henley's behind the bar and, like, we don't name her. Like, she's just in the segment. She's working as the barkeeper and oh, it's his neck and beers. And he's rubbing his head together. He goes, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? She goes, UK, sir. Like, it's been three, Otis, you know, you've had three... And you're sitting there rubbing your head, like, just wondering, you don't look okay. And he goes, my peach left me. And she goes, oh, oh I'm sorry. But I don't know what that means. There's my peach, you know, my beautiful, my Mandy, my Rose. She left me. And she goes, oh, you're so hung up on the whole Mandy thing. Okay, you got to really let her go, dude, like. I know she you, you thought you knew her, but you sort of went away for she sort of went away for a couple of years. She's not the same girl you fell in love with, okay? She's completely different. She's got, you know, JC and GG with her now. She really thinks she's like hot shit and it's not really worth your that hassle for you. And he goes Me But but she goes, Look, I know it's not gonna be easy, but sitting here and moping about her isn't gonna help you. Okay? And then he goes, Yeah, Guess you're right, I'll run more for the road. And then she gets another drink out for Otis. Who's having a rough time of it. Oh! <laughs> not only did it not get penalised for having no one important in the match, it actually got 61, which is a lot better than I thought it would. But, as I'm sure you'll be excited to hear, La French Connection, Malik Blade et Edris Inofe. Duffy Ted Le Hit Row When Edris apparently submits Top Dollar I'll probably be pins one of them with La French Finale Edris Inofe gets a 40 Malik gets a 38 70 for Ashanti and a 53 for Top Dollar Which I guess whenever um, Chamber's back Entitles La French Connection To a Smackdown Tag Team title match <laughs> Here's a segment we're in Adam Pierce's office, and the Miz and Grayson Waller in there, and he goes, What do you mean, Pierce? And he goes, I'm saying the show's booked. He goes, You're celebrating the history of SmackDown. Three hours, and you've got no room for me. You're the greatest Intercontinental Champion in the history of SmackDown. I'm starting to think you this is a conspiracy against us here, because that's right, mate. You know, nobody leaves the Miz and Grayson Waller off the show. They've got to be some sort of dirt on them. I'm going to dig it up, you know. What is it, Pierce? Are you jealous of us? And Miz goes, yeah, are you jealous of us? Because we got to be successful and we made it today, did we? To be wrestlers while you've got to sit back with a suit and do this job. And he goes, look, Miz, look. It's fine. I'll get you on the show next week. Just leave me. And he goes, you know what, Pierce? I will leave. Thank you very much. 
and then they walk out the office and then <laughs> Bailey, Cora, and Dakota walk in. And she's like, sup, bitches? That's like some cringy handshake with Miz and Grayson Waller. Because they're in a great mood tonight. <laughs> and Pierce goes, oh my god, what? She goes, Adam, buddy, you know how I've always been your best favourite SmackDown Women's Champion in history? You know how you're celebrating the history of SmackDown tonight? Well... What better way to celebrate the, you know, the history of SmackDown considering I pinned the SmackDown Women's Champion, you know, six nights ago. What better way to, you know, celebrate SmackDown's history than by putting the current SmackDown Women's Champion up against the greatest ever SmackDown Women's Champion one-on-one for the championship? And Pierce goes, actually about that. And he goes, you're right, Bailey. You pinned Kyrie. That will entitle you to a future SmackDown Women's Championship match. But... You know, you're going to have to wait. And Bailey goes, why? She goes, well, Kyrie is already booked for one night in Tokyo. Bailey goes, no, she fucking isn't. Like, we just had a show. It's only two weeks away. How could she have a challenger already? And Pierce goes, well, you see, one night in Tokyo is a big night for WWE. You know, we don't go to Japan for premium live events every day, Bailey, as I'm sure you're aware. So... We thought we'd put on the biggest match possible of the SmackDown Women's Championship for the audience over in Japan. That will put the SmackDown Women's Champion, Kairi Sane, against Asuka. And Bailey goes, really? Asuka? When was the last time we even saw her? Didn't she? Doesn't she have an injury or something? Bailey goes, well, I've been spoken to the doctors. Asuka should be good to go for, for the One Night in Tokyo show. So... That's that's sorted, and that's your championship match. I've taken it under advisement. We'll get to that after Tokyo. Bailey goes, Well, if we're not going to get the title match to Tokyo, I guess we'll have to just cause more, 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 more damage backstage, girls. Come on, come on. And Pierce goes, No, please don't do that. Backstage. Kayla Rex and Buckins has her guest. The phenomenal AJ Styles. And Kayla goes, Last week, AJ, you know, you stood up to the Regal Coalition and you teamed with DIY against them. So what's next for you? And AJ goes, You know, as we just heard, Adam Pierce talking about WWE returning to the Tokyo Dome. That's an arena that hell that holds a lot of history for me personally, Kayla. Hell Shinsuke, you saw Shinsuke on Raw. He he punched his ticket to Faisal Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship on that show. Do you know the last time before before we came to WWE, me and Shinsuke were the first our last match in that arena against each other. People called it one of the greatest matches in the history of that arena, Kayla Braxton. So, what's next for the phenomenal AJ Styles? I want in. I want Seth freaking Rollins, and I want him in Tokyo. I want him in the Tokyo Dome, my arena, Kayla. Regal goes, keep me here, sarcastic clapping. He goes, my, 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 you sure do like getting ahead of yourself, don't you, AJ? Well, quite frankly, my boys don't appreciate you getting involved in our business last week. I don't know what this little jig is between you and Santos Escobar, but it has to stop. Because trust me, you don't want to make an enemy of the Regal Coalition, because I've got a lot of connections. Not just on here, just here, just over on Raw as well. And if you don't believe the damage that my boys can cause, why don't you go and ask Finn Balor? I know you two are very close. And she goes, this got nothing to do with Finn, Regal. This is about me making my mark here on SmackDown. Okay, and if your boy there, pointing to Ilya, goes, he's not busy tonight, I'm free. I see a lot of promise in this kid. Just not under you and your advisement. So what do you say about it? Me and him, one-on-one tonight. And Ilya steps in, he goes, you're on. So, Ilya Dragunov versus AJ Styles, set for later on tonight. We then cut back to the ring, and Shotzi cuts a good promo here. She, coming off, you know, two of the best matches of her life, that um, that tag match last week, and then the fatal four-way at Clash of the Castle, she says, you know, we're celebrating the history of SmackDown. Apparently. So, any former SmackDown Women's Champion who wants to come out and wrestle for this title right here, right now, come and do it. And Naomi is the one who wants the call. And we're going to get Shotzi and Naomi for the Liberty title. 
gets an 81. She's been, she's really stepped it up, like, <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. She was, I think, in terms of the ladder match, like, f scoring for, for, like, the bottom of the people who weren't, like, not very popular. But she's really coming into her own. She's now getting a 73, and Naomi's getting a 65. The match gets an 81. But yeah, Shotzi retains over Naomi to make defense number three of the title. 10 minutes, 12. And then she holds the title up high after the match, going, yeah, I defended. My name's Shotzi. I'm the best. Bang. <laughs> Guess who attacks? These three bitches. They're coming out to make more damage, and <laughs> they take out the the Liberty Champion, I guess, leave her laying. And then as the road agents come out to break it up, they're like, okay, okay, we'll leave, we'll leave, we'll leave, you know. Our work here is done. <laughs> and Shotzi's left laying with her belt in the ring. We then cut back to the bar. Otis has finally finished. But he said one more for the road, but he's had another two. And he goes, oh... I think I better actually go now, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel those. And she goes, okay, well, I'm sorry, but your bill is, you know, quite high. And he goes, I've got nothing else to spend it on, you know. But I was, I was saving that for gifts for my peach. And then we hear, like, the... I don't know how to describe the noise. Like, it's not the doorbell, but... Do you know, like, that scene in, in shit where people open the door and you can hear, like, bells... Like, literal bells above the door, like, ringing as they walk through the door. That goes on, and we hear, well, 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 look who it is. My favourite loser in my least favourite bar. How you doing, buddy? You still not held at the breakup? Well, I see. It happened two years ago. I just didn't bother to tell you because I don't respect you enough. And then Fallon sort of gets in her face. She's like, "What? What? what is the point here? What is the purpose of this? You know? Kicking a man while he's down. Like, does that make you feel big and strong? And M Mandy goes, <laughs> Look, he's decided to grow a backbone, you know? No, it makes me feel big and strong. It's winning wrestling matches. Kneeing women like you in the face, plucky little girls, and they can step up to Mandy, the star. Okay. So, if you're not busy tonight, you, uh, your, your bar looks crappy. you got, like, one customer, and it's Otis drowning out his sorrows. One you close up night close up tonight early and come meet me in my ring my 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 ways of work tonight and she goes well yeehaw bitch you're on <laughs> we then cut from that and then like I, I imagine the the scene is um plastic attraction leave and then mandy and not mandy fallon and otis or like have a chat like off screen and just sort of like the camera lingers on them and then we hear no stop get that video off get that video off and Corbin's in the ring <laughs> he's, you see he's got a can of beans and he goes this Otis got to go to the bar and drink I would feel bad for him but you know I'm going through worse than he is and I feel like I'm holding myself together or a lot better so this can of beans here once I've finished, because this is all I've got to eat tonight. Once I've finished, this will be the can I will use to take your change. Please, 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 Corbin Fund. I need to get my life back on track. Also, don't invest in monkeys. They ruin your life. And, niece, I saw you on Raw. I'm so proud of you. I wish I got out as soon as I could, because I got destroyed by the fucking market. Out come Trick and Mellow. And Trick points at him and goes, Look at this, Mellow. This dude eating beans. He goes, Yeah, I see that Trick eating beans in my ring. You know? Corbin, 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 you know, you're going through a lot. So I'm going to take it easy on you. I know me coming out here, this briefcase, money in the bank, sort of rubbing it in a little bit. So I'll try and keep this short and sweet. And he opens the briefcase up and he pulls something out of the briefcase. A piece of paper. It's not the contract, but he pulls something else out. And then we see him put, like, reading glasses on. And he goes, you see, Mr. Corbin, you may not look like it right now because you're not feeling the best about yourself, but you being here is actually of great interest to me. You are actually very useful to us. And he goes, I am? What, what, what? Do you want me to, am I coming along with your click? Are you going to, like, fix me up? And he goes, oh, God, no. Quite the opposite, in fact, Corbin. 
um, how do you feel about having a match right now? And he's like, well, I mean, I've got nothing else to do. And then, <laughs> Miller goes, great. Ring the bell. Impromptu match, Carmelo Hayes takes on Baron Corbin. Gets a 70 because, you know, it's short. Melo wins in 3 minutes 33. 84 for Melo, 77 for Corbin. Then I imagine once he's lost, him and Trick like pick him up and toss him out of the ring and throw his can of beans at him as well. And he gets even more stains up his shirt. And then Melo goes, Well, now that bum ass is out of the ring. Let me get to this tricky. Hand me a pen. Pen going right up, Melo. Hands him the pen. And he puts a big tick or tally mark or whatever on the sheet of paper. And he goes, this, you're probably all wondering what, what, what Melo is doing here. This is my hit list. Okay? All, I've got a bunch of names on this list. I need to check them all off, off, off. Because, you see, I am the future A champion here on SmackDown. I will be the WWE champion or the World Heavyweight champion. So, what better way to prove myself, like I need to prove myself already, than by... Slaying every single form of world champion I come across. Let's, let's run it down. November 2021. Me and Trick came up to Raw. For a one for one night. We were part of NXT. Part of that Survivor Series stuff. Edge and Keith Lee. We beat them. That's two. Check them off. Dolphy Ziggs. You know. Doing his thing on Raw right now. Doesn't change the fact that when I first came to Smackdown. Beat his ass. Check him off. How could I forget Mr. WWE Champion himself, Seth freaking Rollins, on top of the world right now. But just two months ago, SummerSlam came to Boston, and Melo put him down. Tick him off. Oni Lorcan, hey Trick, do you remember Oni Lorcan being World Heavyweight Champion? Neither do I. Check him off. And now number six, that bum-ass Baron Corbin down there. Check him off. That's six former world champions. And I'm telling you, I'm only about halfway done. Because I'm taking aim at my next target. AJ Styles. You think you can make your return at the expense a trick? Show up, Trick and Mello? I don't think so. So, you say you're busy with Ilya Dragunov tonight. You say you're busy trying to go for the WWE Championship. You probably got a lot on your plate right now, man. So I'm going to let you rest. But know this one day. Your name's getting checked off this hit list. Along with everybody else I've got on here. On my quest to be the greatest WWE star of all time. Because when I shoot, I don't miss. He puts the list back in the briefcase and he leaves. Backstage, the Hurt Business. MVP's going, What? What is the problem here, boys? You know? This Warden kid, he came into this company. I thought he had a lot of promise. You know, he was standing behind Tyler Breeze. And I thought, that's a guy. That's a guy right there. That's a future world champion. But you know who else I said that about? All three of you. And we've done nothing with it so far. The almighty Bobby Lashley up short against Warden in Cardiff. What are you saying, Bobby? You saying he's stronger than you? Saying he's better than you? What about you? Primetime Ronnie Hughes, is he more primetime than you? Is he more colossal than you, Bronson Reed? Something in this group needs to change. I don't know what it is. But the next time the Hurt Business lay out a target for a championship... We need to bring it home. Because business ain't booming right now, but it needs to be. Okay. So sort of a th I'm actually pointing a cane at all of them as well. Like, he never got injured in this game, but like, I like the visual of MVP with the cane. So I just have him pointing it at people like a mental, mental old man, I guess. <laughs> These three, again... <laughs> <laughs> they're gassed them, gassing themselves up after their, their busy night and Kayla approaches she goes girls what is 
what is going on here? She goes, shut up, Kayla. Takes the mic off and she goes, let me tell you what's going on here, okay? We are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, I beat Kyrie, Clash of the Castle. I, but I'm not next in line because Asuka's, I guess she's a big star in Japan than me. That's that's not true because Ding Dong, hello, I'm the biggest star in this whole company. But, so me, Cora, Bailey, look at, look at our resumes already together. Kyrie, not here this week, we took her out. Utami, just wiped her out. Anne Marie, Kelsey, they're gone. Shotzi, she's now out of here. When's it gonna end, Caleb Braxton, you know? Ask her gonna show her face next week because we'll deal with her. Okay? Who else? Nobody, nobody can stop us. We are now in control of everything. And Cora goes, you know, for, for the longest time, I thought that Bailey was in the wrong and I tried to corrupt her brain. But she needed to fix mine. I see everything clearly now. We are the damage control of this show. We control the damage. Bailey goes, Ooh, I like that one. Dakota? He goes, <laughs> Yeah, let's go control more damage. So there's the name, obviously. <laughs> um, the funny part is... Well, A, she's injured, and B, not having Eo in the group anyway, even if she wasn't injured, because, like, what's well, one of my favourite parts about TW saves is when they do shit in real life, but I've got to make an alternate reality version of that thing, because the people involved in that thing in real life wouldn't make sense for me to include in it. So, like, having Eo in this group, if she was still around, would have been weird. But Cora is a nice stand-in. Um, there's no leader, so she's not exactly like the underling or whatever, but she will obviously get the rub just by being with Bailey and Dakota. And it was a nice, long, slow burn. Originally, I was going to have the turn be like a final turn, and then Cora was a face feuding with Bailey, but they turned Cora in real life, so I thought, yeah, she can have her mind corrupted, I guess. 56. Fallon Henley beats Mandy Rose by fast roll-up. In, I guess, an upset. Yeehaw, bitch. Gets a 35. And a 66 for Mandy. <laughs> so, obviously... Um, we'll get to get to it a bit more later on. But, obviously, if we're going to expand SmackDown to three hours... Um, a couple of names need to, like, hop over from Raw. Need a couple of call-ups. Need to, like, fill the roster out a bit more. So, I guess Fallon Henley's win here, we have a another undercard babyface woman for the SmackDown Women's Division. You know, right at the time we need them, because five of them have just been taken out. So. Segment. Alistair Black. And Danny Loon is talking to him, he goes, Do you not know that, like, last week, a liar, he lies to you, Ezekiel lied to you. When he admitted that he was Elias. You do realise that, right? And then he sort of like puts his finger up to, get to her lips. Stop her talking. And he goes, I appreciate the concern. But here's the thing. You say, do I realise that Ezekiel, as you want to call him, was lying? No. The, f the point is, does he realise that he wasn't? Because everything that we've ever said about him is true. That is our family member in there. And we need him to return. And then, like, this is going to sound silly. Because I've just realised it's the House of Black. But I imagine, like, a letter or something slides underneath the door. And then Alice is like, what the fuck is this? And he picks it up. And he reads it. And it's a letter from Ezekiel or Elias or whatever. And he goes... You want me back? Come meet me here at this location next next Friday or some shit. It's like in the backwoods or something. And he goes, Boys, Danny, it appears we have a family outing to attend. Whose show is it? 
It's LA Night Show. Now let me talk to you. Clatter the ca- Yeah. Right now, this very second, this thought has just come to me. Let me talk to you should be the name of his talk show instead of the LA Night Show. I like the whose who's show is it, it's LA Night Show thing, but that can still be the lead in, I guess. So, yeah, from now on, the show is called Let Me Talk To You. He goes, Let me talk to you. Clash of the Castle. Huge raving success for WWE. You know, Cardiff Wales packed out Principality Stadium. You know, new WWE champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins, yeah? You know, wonder what he's gonna have to once he's gonna get a challenger. If he's not too scared, he'll face up against a megastar like L.A. Knight. We had the same retaining SmackDown Tag Team Champions, DIY. Impressive showing. And then we had my guest at this time, the United States Champion, Mr. Warden. Out comes Warden. And he, like, he's in a suit and he sits on the chair next to LA. And he goes, Warden, let me talk to you. You've been an impressive stud ever since SummerSlam the last two months since you became the United States Champion. Yeah? And he goes, yeah, I have, yeah. Thanks. He goes, you've just made anybody that's gone into your path. Let me run him down to you. Ricochet. Yeah. Bronny Hughes. Yeah. Bronson Reed. Yeah. The almighty Bobby Lashley. Yeah. So, where are you looking for your next challenge, Mr. Warden? He goes, I'm down to fight anybody. Anybody who thinks they deserve a shot at my title, I'll take them on. He goes, great, that's great, great, great. So how do you feel? You know, you're a big man, big star here, but you ain't no mega star. How about next week he's a coward? You put that title on the line, one on one, against L.A. Knight. Yeah. And Warden goes, bring it. Yeah, let's go make it official. And he goes, that's great. I'll see you there. Now, get out of L.A. Knight's ring. I got a show to finish. And Warden, like, looks at him like he wants to attack him. Then he just goes, nah, it's not worth it, and just sort of leaves. And then they get LA Knight by himself. He goes, don't, don't you put the camera on that piece of crap. He's going to be the former United States champion this time next week. Look at me. Get the camera on me, because I'm the one and only mega star in this ring. Now, let me finish talking to you, because LA Knight is tired of the disrespect. He's tired of being overlooked here on SmackDown. You know, Grace of Waller and The Miz, they moan of him. But LA Knight proved that he's better. And then he's jumped by three people in masks who lay him out, put him through the table with some big, like, triple T move. Not the shield powerbomb, because that's too silly, because we've already got the shield that did that. So I don't know exactly what their move would be, but some, you know, big trio move. And then they quickly run out through the crowd before they can be captured by security and unmasked or whatever. But LA Knight left laying on Let Me Talk To You. By who? We don't know, but he does have a match with Warden next week. He did get that confirmed. Speaking of tag teams, nobody mentioned tag teams. An angry Limit Breakers. He goes, Keith, what is it? Okay, you got a plan. You got to devise a plan. He goes, whoa, 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 Braun. Let me explain to you. We are both, you know, superior athletes, you know. I am a former World Heavyweight Champion. You're a former United States Champion. We have got a lot of success under our belts as single stars. But, you know, great tag teams, they're not formed overnight, Mr. Breaker. And that is why we must take a look different approach about the Limit Breakers. You see, you are Mr. Braun Breaker. Breaker is in your name. You know, you are the, you're the brawn, you're the strong, and I am Limitless Keith Lee, I'm the brains of the operation, just hell, indubitably so. So, maybe, if we look at this at a different angle, you get in my drift? And then he looks at me and goes, I don't know if you've heard, but math isn't exactly my strong suit in my family. He goes, this has got nothing to do with math. Do you understand physics? And Bron goes, a little. And he goes, the physics of two big men like us. Just tossing around every other member of the SmackDown Tag Team division. 
What do you reckon the result will be there, Mr. Breaker? You go, oh, that would make us the best, the best tag team here on here on SmackDown. And Keith just pats him on the shoulder and he goes, Indubitably so. Now you appear to be getting it. So, finally getting some re some regrouping from these two. They're giving this tag team thing another crack, I guess, but... <laughs> from a different approach. Just a two-minute Tony Storm video. Um, I don't know what she'd be doing. Um, Tony Storm things, whatever she gets up to, but I had two minutes to fill. She wasn't on the show. Let's hype her up a little bit. Ah, uh, chemistry shit. This should have been a... I had this going so long, I was so hyped. But as soon as the second I booked this in to go like 18 minutes, I was like, yeah, that's a fucking bang, and that's gonna be like a 90. But no, they don't have any chemistry at all. And the match got 75. That is so cringe. <laughs> anyway, AJ beats Ilya in the end. He's got all of the SmackDown Regal Coalition out there, but... Santos, again. No idea why. Coming to the aid of AJ Styles. But AJ beats Ilya, phenomenal forearm. 65 for AJ Styles, 63 for Ilya Dragunov. And yeah... Should have been better, but chemistry fucked me over. Because of course it did. Regal Coalition, after the match, they they try and get to AJ Styles, but Santos again, like, stands in their way. And him and AJ, like, he gets, he gets in the way as they try to attack AJ Styles. And that sort of, like, catches Regal off guard to the point where AJ and him can roll out of the ring and sort of just escape unharmed. And Regal's like, oh, what a nuisance. So, Santos has been very protective of AJ recently. Like, what is going on there? Backstage segment. Pierce is in his office. Door opens. And Alexa walks in. She goes, oh, these goddamn Ubers, they weren't running, like, as frequently as they were. Like, it, that guy's getting one star. Does he not know who I am? Making me wait this long. I had to get my coffee and all sorts. Anyway, Hello. I'm here. What do you want? Pierce goes, It's always great to see you, Alexa. Like, welcome back to the SmackDown, for one. She goes, yeah, they miss me. And Pierce goes, two. So, I don't know if you've heard the big news. She goes, what's the big news? SmackDown going forward from tonight, three hours every single week on Fox. You know, that's a lot of money. That we're, we're getting and the company's getting. And Alexa goes, well, my show's been three hours for a, its entire, entire, the entire time I've been GM. So I guess welcome to finally getting on my level. And Pierce goes, you don't see what I'm implying here. And she goes, what? Goes, well, back in April when we did the draft, Raw got three, SmackDown got two because, you know, three hours, two hours. And of course, that, that gave Raw the bigger roster compared to SmackDown. So, now that both shows are on the same level length and the same level playing field, it only seems fair that, and Triple H agrees with me, a good portion of your Raw roster makes the jump over here to balance the numbers out. She goes, well, I've got a lot of people that I would love to send you, but in terms of damaging my show okay just speak to Triple H about this because I'm not going to say oh you can take all those these people I don't want them okay just bring me up a list and then we'll we'll go over it yeah this will be a lot, a lot of effort from everybody involved but sure you can take some of my people big big show next week we have got the, as previously announced, the United States Championship match, LA Knight, taking on Warden for the United States Championship. Will he be 100% after that mysterious attack from whoever that those three men were earlier on tonight? But as far as we know, he's still going in to wrestle Warden for the championship next week. And now she launches for La Major announcement. Next week, the in-ring debut of David Marteau. 
as he does one on one with Johnny Gargano. <laughs> and then also announced, Utami High Sister and Bailey will go one on one after, you know, everything that Damage Control has done tonight. You know, that seems fitting. And we also find out who will face Seth Freak and Rollins at one night in Tokyo. We don't know the competitors involved. We just know that obviously because obviously it could be somebody coming over from Raw. But we just know that once all that just been sorted out, Pierce will hold a big number one contenders match to determine who will face Seth Rollins at the Tokyo Dome next Sunday. And also announced tonight for that show, the first match confirmed for One Night in Tokyo, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, Kyrie Sane takes on Asuka. And I've just realised now that it isn't the first match announced for that show, because we announced the main event from Raw's side on Raw this week, when Drew McIntyre will defend his World Heavyweight Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. Ladies and gentlemen, acknowledge me. <laughs> now, 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 now. You, you out there, you, you doubted Seth freaking Rollins. You, all of you in the arena tonight, you, you doubted Seth freaking Rollins. All of you, you watching at home, you. Doubted Seth freaking Rollins. Well, guess who's wrong now? <laughs> you see, Roman. Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. You know, big dog as I know him. He's good. He's one hell of a competitor. You don't hold this WWE Championship for over a year by being bad. But there's one thing he's not, and that's not that Seth freaking Rollins, baby. See, ever since that day, ever since Roman, since SummerSlam last year, since you formed this bloodline, I've known what my one single goal in life to be, and that's to tear the whole thing down. Burn it down is not just a cute little catchphrase, Roman, like yours. Acknowledge me, all that shit. It's what I do best. And that's why I planted those little seeds of doubt in your family. I knew that me going into the Bloodlines locker room would look suspicious. Which is why I got to belay the blame at Jacob Fatu's feet. And you all fell for the bait. So much so, Roman, you were so proud. You were so... I was in your head so much that... You didn't fly any of your family members out to Cardiff. Because you were, you didn't know if you could trust them. And I knew deep down. All three of those guys. Your little puppets. They are all there to acknowledge their tribal chief. And kiss their tribal chief's ass. You had nothing to worry about. But Seth Freak and Rollins. Did you in. Maybe you'll learn better. Next time. Than to try and. Get into the head of Seth freaking Rollins because how oh, I'm I'm one step ahead of you at all times. So plan A didn't work out back at the Royal Rumble. But that's fine. Because Roman, in the immortal words of June second, two thousand and fourteen, the night that I took a chair to your back and changed the game forever. There's always 
a plan B. My plan B. Ladies and gentlemen, what you see before you, your eyes do not deceive you. Do not scratch your eyes. For this man, he may look like an Uso. He may look like a member of the bloodline, but he is far from that. Let me introduce you to the Usos' his baby brother, Solo Sikoa. And as you can tell, this man's name is Solo. He doesn't need a bloodline. In fact, he resents his family. You know, growing up on the street as a street fighter because he was the runt of the litter. You know, Jimmy and Jay got all the attention. Roman was, he was the golden boy. Nobody cared about Solo. They left Solo defend for himself on the streets and that's how he became the street fighting champion because his family neglected him and after all these years he saw his brothers thriving on top not one text not one phone call people didn't even know there was a solo Sokoa they just fought the Usos those are Rikishi's boys there's two of them they're twins so solo he makes it to WWE. And what does he do? He goes to NXT. And everyone goes, Oh, that's the Uso. That's the third Uso that I've heard so much about. When's he going to join his brothers? You know, what's his name going to be? Solo Uso? Is he going to be their, their, their heavy? Like what Jacob Fatu is? No, he's not going to be anything like Jacob Fatu because Jacob Fatu has no backbone. He fell straight in line the second he was asked. Solo is his own man. Solo, why, why would he acknowledge his tribal chief, you know? Solo Sokoa has not seen Roman Reigns and for 20 years. Well, until Cardiff. So, that's a lot of pent up frustration put in this one six foot three Samoan body and the best way to vent that frustration after all these years of being neglected of being the street fighting champion because your family neglected you of making it to WWE and immediately getting pigeonholed as you know a third wheel Solo says no more and if you wanna resent the bloodline that resented you for over 20 years. Well, somebody's cooking something good to take them down. You may want to join him. <laughs> and then he hands Solo the mic. And Solo speaks and he goes, Roman. Jacob. My brothers. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you for everything you did that made me this way. It could have been me. I could have been one of y'all. But you didn't want me. Your loss. Slams the mic down. And then we end the show. 82. That fucking Ilya Dragunov match really annoyed me. That would go hard as fuck in real life. I don't care what the game says. But yeah. Big episode of Smackdown here. First three hour show of many. Um, there wasn't a lot of wrestling tonight. Um, which is why there's so many angles to fill it out. But <laughs> yeah. That's because I didn't really announce anything after Clash of the Castle. Anyway. There will be a lot of wrestling on Velocity. Where Rey Mysterio is still the champion. And maybe we'll find out what's next for him. And who he'll face. At one night in Tokyo. <laughs> okay then. Um, 
Well, I've got a segment to start with. Um, we start with a quick re- a pre-tape from RJ City, who explains that Rey Mysterio's contender for One Night in Tokyo will be determined in the main event. It will be a high-flying, fatal four-way match, pitting Ricochet, Wesley, Kushida, and a returning Evan Bourne in a fatal four-way, where the winner will face Rey in the Tokyo Dome. But we then get what I'm going to assume is one of the best matches in the history of Velocity, at least since the World Cup. Roderick Strong and Grand Metal League tear it the fuck down in the opening match. Roddy wins with a stronghold in 18-24. 81 for Roddy, 87 for Metalik. And get 73. Um, Zachary Ben-Chahar against Lince Dorado. Zachary wins, 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Champagne Super Nibar. 65 for Zachary Ben-Chahar and a 67 for Lindsay. Another, just a quick match here. Uh, 69. Nine, nice. Um, injury probably slowed it down a little bit. Don't know what a percussive ankle stretch is. It doesn't sound too painful. Hopefully it's not enough to keep him out for too long. But yeah, South Wales subculture of the House of Black. Defeat the team of Ike Majiro and Sir Reginald. Webster pins Reggie with a 450. An 80 for Andrew, 78 for Webster, 45 for Reggie and a 41 for Jiro. And then the main event is an 84 which as you can imagine given where the next event is taking place it is Kushida who picks up the win he, he submits Wesley with a Kushida lock um, Evan Bourne gets a 72 you know this is his first match back I brought him back because you know I wanted some old names basically like established names for the division like, he's not on Raw or SmackDown. He's going to be one of the people at the minute that's just assigned to Velocity. But maybe he, maybe eventually he'll get, he'll move to Raw or SmackDown or whatever. But, yeah. He, at the minute, he's just a Velocity guy. And he gets a 72, which is the weakest in the match, but not by a lot. Because Wesley gets a 74, Kushida gets a 73, and Ricochet gets a 93. Which is why him and Evan didn't take the fall when Wesley did. And yeah, that announces that Rey Mysterio and Kushida. I'm going to Google right now if that's the first time that match has ever happened. Sounds like it will be because Kushida was only ever in um, New Japan. I don't remember Rey having a New Japan run. I remember him being at All In, but... Yeah, I think this is the first time ever. Yeah, Rey Mysterio and Kushida, one-on-one in Tokyo, in the Tokyo Dome. 83, that must be the best episode of Velocity. <laughs> Velocity was better than SmackDown this week. According to the game, at least. But what matters more than what the game thinks is what you think. Let me know if you thought Velocity was better than SmackDown this week. Or if not, let me know what your thoughts were on either show. And yeah, 300. You know? This is obviously going to be a little time just to sit back and reflect on that number. <laughs> because I don't know of many series that get 300 episodes in and like you still feel like you haven't hit your best yet because honestly as I am right now it's the most fun I'm having booking this save basically the whole time I've done it just I think I've I've made a couple of nice tweaks to it like especially for season 6 that have now made me enjoy this a whole lot more than I was like I've never I've never disliked doing it but like obviously, if everything has its ups and downs, like I've never, I've never gone. Oh, I fucking, I've got to wake up and record Raw or SmackDown because, uh, but I've never felt like that about it. But it's just, it's not something I look forward to doing, you know. And this is three hundred episodes in. <laughs> not a lot of series can say that, but yeah, here's to another three hundred, I guess. Um. I'll see you next time for episode number 301 as we march towards 400 and it will be the go-home show for the one night in Tokyo show. See you then.